Good afternoon, NOAA community. How is everyone today? That's not a cheesy opener. I'm actually asking. It stands behind our science. And so can I get a show of hands? How are you doing today on a scale of bad to great? Who's doing bad? Who's doing good? And who's doing great? So no matter what you answered, I can guarantee that all of us could probably be better. And that's what I'm here to talk about today, our startup, Be Better. Be Better was created out of the pain of something that is a growing problem in the world, decision making. Any of us in the room today that know what I'm talking about understand that gut feeling wrenching squeeze of, oi, am I making the right decision? Did I have enough information? Is my decision any better than a guess? And God forbid, is it more than a Band-Aid? Decision-making stands behind so many things that drive our markets, economy, even policies. And what we've come to realize after a lot of years of not only our team, but me personally, is going around the world as a business development specialist, sitting next to big decision-makers, whether it be in the private or public sector, sitting there seeing those, those rolling thoughts in their minds. Am I right? Is this decision going to bring the effect and the impact that we wanted? And what I've realized after all these years is it really comes down to people. In the end, we're making decisions about people. Our customers, our employees, our supply chain. It's always about people. There's emotions behind the game that aren't easy to see. Because most of the data that we have at our fingertips to make data-driven decisions is objective data. But what about subjective data? What about the subjective feelings of someone like this? And if anyone in the room can tell me what this guy's feeling, then I'll put my hat down as the CEO of my fifth company and I'll walk off stage. But in the end of the day, we don't know if he's happy, if he's sad, if he's excited, if he's celebrating. You can only know if you actually ask him. And in Be Better, that's what we decided to do. And so three years ago, after a very long business trip in various African countries, which I won't mention, I came back home and I sat with a dear friend of mine, Dr. Anati Tai Sari who today is my co-founder and partner in crime and Be Better and with us here today. I said, Anat, these people are never going to make right decisions. And she simply explained to me as a world-renowned expert in progress and well-being, Emily, they're not looking at the right information. I said, oh, where's that information? Let me give it to them. And she said, that's a problem because it's very difficult to collect. With the best types of services, it'll take you six months. Normally, it'll take you two years. I said, forget about it. Business doesn't work that way. You can't give me information in two years from now and expect me to look at it seriously. That's not going to work. And so, like two true Israeli women, we said it's impossible. Let's do it. And so we embarked on a journey in three years down the road. I'm going to introduce to you what she introduced to me that day, changing the way that I do business, not only in all of my companies, but for all of our clients. Well-being, a term that some of us are starting to hear, and I'll explain why in a moment. But what is well-being? Essentially, to put it easily, for all of us that didn't spend 13 years in academia like my co-founder, well-being is everything that makes up our reality. The elements that touch us on a day-to-day -day basis, no matter what field they fall in. Now, why are we hearing well-being now? Well, the lucky thing for our company is that our product market fit was set for us. The world decided that well-being is so important to start understanding that it's become a standard. It's not even a trend. 10 years ago, we all dealt with environmental standards. A decade before that, we dealt with health standards. Today, we are seeing ministries, national governments creating well-being ministries and happiness ministries, which falls under the science of well-being. Corporates are starting to understand that they need to look at sustainability and well-being. How are their projects impacting people? These are things that we have to start proving to the World Bank, to the IMF, to even get grants for projects. And so the solution's easy, just like every standard that came into the economy. We need an expert. That's tougher than you'd think, and there aren't very many experts in the world on well-being. Plus, we're tired of that. We're tired of consultancies. We live in a day and age where if it's not digital, it doesn't exist. And so it's taken us two years to look at that market and to say, OK, how is Be Better going to make measuring well-being available, accessible, easy, and easy to understand for any client in the private or public sector that wants to use it. So we've created a platform that measures well-being to increase KPIs. It's customizable to any client need, 
Essentially, we can take all of that science and their needs and put it into a survey, which has taken us two years to develop in a way where it won't be annoying for anyone, because we all know what that's like. Up to 40 questions under four minutes, and we're able to bring an automatic, and when I say automatic, up to 24 hours. In up to 24 hours, you'll get all of the results analyzed completely according to well-being science. You'll know exactly where your community's at. To give you a little bit of a taste, this is an example of a live test that we did at the OECD conference in Korea in November. The results are the way that we like them in business, given to us on a graph that clearly shows us where our point of impact is, where are we doing great, and where do we need to improve. For people that sit in the seats that I sit in, that's extremely important to know where I should not be wasting my money. And so a little bit about the well-being of our company. Uh, the company at the moment has launched its MVP. We have we launched in January our MVP here in Israel. We have four paying customers using our beta service here. And we have two international organizations that we consult on a daily basis. Uh, the investment so far, fortunately to, compared to a lot of the other companies that I've seen here today, relatively low. We've invested $350,000 to get to this point so far. And now we are looking for another investment to grow. But not only to grow globally, we're looking to get smarter. You see, we've become disruptive, as this community would use the term, in our markets because we took something that normally would take two, two months, six months, two years to do through conservative surveys, attached it to some of the most modern technology Israel has to offer, and created a mix that allows us to provide measuring well-being services in an immediate and automatic form. And so in 2016, we spent most of the year with lots of headaches and dealing with our science, mainly of my co-founder trying to explain to me, the businesswoman, what well-being is and why we should use it. 2017, creating the platform. I won't say how many apps we developed that we threw out before we decided to go with what we have now. And 2018, thankfully, had got the support from the international community to become, to become a market leader in well-being. And 2019, we're looking to go big. So if you're interested in going big with us, we would love to speak to you. We all have our well-being geek shirts on. You're welcome to find any of our staff or take a picture of the QR code to do the survey that we've created for the NOAA community. And at the end of the conference tomorrow evening, we'll send out the results on how the well-being of this community is. And so in a nutshell, we know that well-being is the future. Are you ready for it? <laughs>